Hi, and welcome to our review of the midterm for Politics 315. I'm Pam Martin, your instructor. And I just wanted to remind you that we are going into, I can't believe it, but already week four, um, which begins on September 9th for us Tuesday, and you've got a discussion post. This is a really interesting reading, particularly Francis Fukuyama's work on the end of history, and you can read all about him, just Google him. He um, was part of the neoconservative movement in the 90s and has sort of transitioned out of that and is a political philosopher, very well known, and I think you'll enjoy it. And he's had some more recent writings as well that I think that you will enjoy. That said, I know that we're only in week four, and as you see as I scroll through our calendar on our syllabus, week eight begins our midterm. But I know that a lot of you are working and have other things in your lives and want to be prepared for the midterm. And this is not a typical midterm, so I thought I would explain it to you. By, um, I would say by the end of week four, I will put a sign-up sheet up, uh, another sign-up genius sheet, where you can sign up for a role in the midterm. This midterm is a simulation of the six-party talks around the North Korean nuclear issue. I think it'll be particularly interesting for us because of the nuclear talks going on in Iran, the pressures in the Ukraine and Russia, um, as well as, of course, in the Middle East, Israel and Gaza. All of these pressures will influence how we think about the current midterm simulation not to mention that it was only recently that Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea, was testing missiles and claiming that they could possibly reach the United States. In any event, I would ask you to read over the midterm materials in the upcoming weeks and to select an actor, and that would be one of six countries, which would be the United States, Japan, China, Russia, North Korea, or South Korea, or a non-governmental organization, or the press. The interesting thing about the non-governmental organization is that non-governmental organizations work as um, sort of leverage makers in the international system. They use knowledge and they use data, evidence, photos, social media to leverage countries or international organizations to create policy outcomes that they want. A lot of the anti-nuclear weapon NGOs uh, are working on this issue with North Korea, human rights NGOs. So if those types of issues interest you, you might think about being an NGO. It's sort of a fun role because you get to work with all actors and try and influence them with your epistemic, we call them epistemic communities, with your epistemic or, or empirical or knowledge, right? The press and social media, I don't think I need to say, are such important actors in the international system today. If you just look at the tragic uses of ISIS, of YouTube, or even just the use of Facebook by any myriad of uh, organizations, criminal or, or otherwise, um, you will see that Facebook is a main provider of, of information, of accounts and events. You could also be a media representative for North Korea. They have their own state-run media as well as uh, China uh, and Russia. So those would be options for you. If you're a communications major or if you simply just like the role of the press or you simply want to sort of create information that may impact the negotiations, they, I encourage you to do this. It's, it's also a fun role. These are two roles that I created. Now. This midterm will be through a website called Icons. And if I just bring myself down to my screen here, I can show you what it sort of looks like right here. And so here you can see the Icons project. It runs through the University of Maryland, which is where I went to graduate school. And many eons ago when I was there, we used this icon simulation, but not in the robust, rich format it is today because the well, we didn't even have, uh, we were working on a DOS system at the time. But um, if you notice the catalog, this is a description of the simulation, which I've also placed in Moodle for you, so you don't have to try and read it quickly now. But you'll notice that there are role sheets involved for each team member. It tells you your role. It gives you research suggestions. And you will go to this website with your own personal login and password 
and you will be able to interact within this website. Now, as in the real world, only countries, meaning states in the international system, can interact formally. Okay? The NGOs and the press must interact through our discussion board that I will place in Moodle and through email to the class for their information. For example, a special report that you've produced or social media, etc. And so that will be your, uh, your role. But the states can formally negotiate as soon as I open this. And I plan to open this by about, uh, by the looks of our syllabus, I will, I will open this for the midterm during week seven. So you have one whole week before you start submitting things of negotiation. So you can negotiate within formally, within icons, and also within Moodle. You can email each other, etc. And everyone will know who their role is because we'll sign up in Sign Up Genius, and so you'll have a list there of, of who is in which role. So that said, once you select a country or an organization or media, you first have to, on September 25th, it's not listed on the syllabus, but it's in Moodle, and I'll, I'll put it in the syllabus, you have to submit a worksheet. And it's really, it's a 10-minute process. It's, it's simply so that you can get your mind wrapped around who your country is or who your organization is and what are their roles. So there are 10 questions, and there are questions like, who is the president of your organization or your country or prime minister? Um, where is it located? What's the mission? Who are the bordering countries in the case of a country, etc.? And that will be due by 11 p.m. on September 25th. Then, you notice on October 2nd, you have a position paper due. Now, we have a class of about 25 students. So if we have six roles plus two others, that's eight roles. It's about mm, three to four people in each role. One other role that I neglected to mention is the role of the Director General. And there may be a person in our class, or persons, uh, we can have up to two, who would like to take more of a leadership role. And that Director General will help me mobilize states towards a peaceful agreement, towards a negotiated settlement of this crisis situation. So I will work with the Director General to help states negotiate. The Director General will work within the ICON system as well as within, the, um, within Moodle to encourage countries to move and take positions towards some type of settlement. That said, not every settlement is going to be peaceful. Maybe that we, at the end of the uh, at the end of the negotiations, we decide that the only thing we can all agree on, because it has to be a consensus agreement, the only thing we can agree on is that we agree to certain terms under which we will meet again in three months or six months, something like that. Sometimes uh, you may be able to agree on some issues and have a treaty that you will revisit in a certain amount of time to further that treaty with other issues. And so we'll go over this as we're going through the midterm. Now, um, your position paper that is due on October 2nd is a group activity, and you see that in the grading guidelines, which means that if you are North Korea, for example, and there are three of you who are North Korea, well, all three of you can't have a different position because you're one country with one foreign policy. So all three of you would write the paper together. Okay, it's a maximum of two pages, and it's uh, detailed and outlined in the grading guidelines. But the point is, you have to work together as a country, which means as a team. I would encourage you not to have to drive to campus at a certain time, but to use Skype and email and other digital modes of communication to coordinate this. On October 7th, once we have all our position papers in, and I look at them, and I, I see your positions, you all will have positions, of course, then uh, we will, and you'll have been debating back and forth and sending each other proposals for certain treaties within ICONS, on October 7th, the discussion board will open from 7 to 11. 
and you'll have formal, formal negotiations where each actor will propose some type of resolution to the situation, some type of proposal, okay? Whether it be disarmament or whether it be nuclear missile, or not missile, but nuclear uh, reactor inspections or et cetera. Uh, and then on October 9th, we will have a live negotiation from 3 to 4 p.m. in Skype, just audio, not video. That live negotiation, in that live negotiation, you may not be able to attend, and I will not take points away from you for that. That's, that's not your fault if you're in class or work at that time. But if you can't attend, I would like at least one representative speaker for each group to attend, and we will negotiate live on that day, and we may come up with a proposal uh, for peace, which would be a resolution. Okay? Now let me show you, and then let me just say that, and, and so that proposal actually is another group project in the sense that countries will have to come together to create that proposal, and, and the NGOs, you may sign on to that proposal in agreement to that proposal, okay? And then let me show you, once we finish this activity, I'd like you to reflect on the activity and think about how it relates to the things we've read in class. Was your state or your organization more realist or liberal institutionalist? How did it interact in the international system and in the crisis? Did you see that actors were more self-interested and conflictive or were they more cooperative? And those guidelines are located, all of those, in Moodle. Under week eight, you'll notice I have all of the grading guidelines in this folder, and you can just click here and see them. And there they are all listed. Okay. But I also have them under week eight, individually labeled under each assignment that is due. And so there you'll see the first worksheet due September 25th and the position paper due October 2nd and the proposal due October 9th and then the reflection paper due October 16th, all at 11 p.m. And that's where you submit them and your grading guidelines are right here. So let me just review here for one minute your overview. And I'd like to point out again to you, right here in the dates, that your position paper is a group activity and your proposal is a group activity. Again, if you think about a real simulation, this is going to mimic a real UN summit for a crisis toward peace, or a resolution of, of a crisis toward peace. So your position would have to be a group paper because if you are the United States, the U.S. can only have one position. And the proposal toward a resolution of the crisis could be a U.S., a joint U.S.-Japan proposal, for example. Or it could be a joint U.S.-Japan-South Korea proposal with all of the guidelines. You have to follow all the guidelines as listed in the grading guidelines. I have certain areas that you have to answer. And then individually, you would submit the worksheet and the reflection paper. Again, the negotiations will be the week of the 7th, the 7th and the 9th, the 7th and the discussion board, and the 9th live in Skype. If you can't be there, don't worry. I certainly understand. This may seem complicated, but I think once you read through everything, you'll see that it's a far more interactive midterm than simply filling in blanks. And I hope that it is a practical application of everything that we are reading and learning about this semester. And I look forward to negotiating through this crisis. Thanks so much.